Okay, you guys, I'm working overtime for you guys again. I think it's going to be an important video for others. Um, a lot of us are on a budget and we want to try to figure out a solution. So this is a solution I came up with and I hope it works for a lot of you guys. Okay, um, the name of this. Okay, hopefully we got that in there. Uh, the least expensive one I could find on Amazon. Company is... Camco, C-A-M-C-O. Um, this is an actual 30 amp, <laughs> 30 amp RV plug. Okay, uh, they make 50 amp also. Um, but my generator, I'm waiting for to pick up. It's actually at Home Depot. I gotta go get it. Um, what is that? Uh, Champion DH open inverter. It's not a closed-in box, so save a few a few dollars. Uh, but it still is an inverter, and it's quieter than a traditional generator. And if I put it in a little shed and stuff like that, it should be really nice and quiet. So I intend to do things a little step by step. But this cable was under thirty-five dollars, uh, shipped free. I just had to wait a little bit, so that was nice. Uh, it's pretty thick. It says here, thirty amps. Uh, one side was a female. I actually cut it off right there. <laughs> Uh, cut that off because I didn't need that. I cut a little short. If I was a little more intelligent, I should have made it a little bit longer in case I need to use it later on with something. But I still have enough here to make it work if I have to do something um, later on to make this for a different type of accessory. So there's still enough there, um, but I should have made this a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, 25 feet long. And interesting thing, uh, when I was watching a YouTube video yesterday, uh, 50 feet the amperage drops because of the distance of the cable something I gotta understand a little bit better maybe you guys can help me with that I gotta look up to understand a little bit better I thought 25 to 50 feet isn't that long but apparently it is I believe this 30 amp cable might jump only down to 20 amps uh, because of the double the distance something I have to look up I have to ask one of the electricians that works over here he knows him and his father both master electricians I'm not an electrician <laughs> cheap old fitting here for about three bucks didn't exactly fit I had to get a little neoprene kind of wrap it around here uh, to get it to fit in there and then shave it down and that's how I got this fitting to be nice and tight in there I wrapped a little electrical tape so nothing comes loose here but that's how I got the fitting to be tight uh, excuse me to, to cut the neoprene big deal <laughs> um, not necessary tool but this to help cut the insulation on the actual cable itself. It's easy to cut the insulation off. Um, when I cut the insulation off, there was a white powder inside, which was nice. Uh, help it move around, be more flexible without something binding up. I haven't seen that in uh, cable so less expensive than this. This is uh, extremely well made, this cable. The handle here. Uh, stuff like that okay um, really nice stuff I'm kind of impressed for the money uh, what they're giving us got the Cooper uh, electrician suppliers uh, Lyman suppliers they got a weird name for this <laughs> it's a Lyman uh, Klein over over 50, probably about 20 years old this thing beat the crap out of it and it still works uh, Klein not that I'm gonna need it but just in case uh, this was just set and sit here and a bunch of assorted uh, why am I gonna work with? Okay, now I'm gonna pause the video, uh, get some uh, 12 gauge wiring for the outlets and start connecting the wires. And then when I restart the, the video, you'll see some of the wiring done but not fully connected. Then I'll rerun the video and start connecting everything. Uh, face cover over here. Uh, Wasn't well, that cheap? The outlets were about. $18 a piece um, I could if I was smarter maybe I could have put 120 115 if I need to use that 20 it was there but this is gonna work in general because I don't know I'll be running one upstairs one downstairs and having 20 amps knowing which one's pulling more load is fine okay so this is this is fine for my setup and I guess you can see the whole idea is you're running straight from your generator into your underneath your window or through your door however you're running your power um, you're not have a crazy setup. You're not using some kind of interlock or you're not going directly to the panel. Do something like this. As long as you understand 
what kind of amperage you bring it in 10 gauge here and 12 gauge wiring for the uh, GFCIs a lot of people call these GFIs it's understood what they are um, technical name is GFCI okay, I've known that for two decades and uh, <laughs> I still hear people call them GFI and I don't get offended by it I just figure I'd point that out okay let's pause the video while we get some more wiring and start getting more things together okay Okay, we got our wiring here. This is uh, stranded, not solid wire. If I had a choice for solid wire, I would use that. But this is what's available to me right now. This is kind of important. I want you guys to see how well fitted this is. How the three wires are really well coated. This is an excellently made uh, extension cord for RV. I don't know if that's the code, but this is the chalky stuff I was telling you guys about. It gets on your hand and it's very. Ex I've never seen one this well made. Uh, I don't know, I'm bragging a little bit and I apologize I'm making the video long, so let's pause it again while I start doing the wiring. Gotta point out an important note over here. It says line and it looks like Nina in Spanish uh, right here. A little bit hard to see. Hopefully we got that. And that basically, that's where your power comes in. It should say load on the bottom. That's where you're pulling your current, whether it be an outlet or a device. Uh, but these got to be hooked up correctly. If you hook them up wrong, they won't work right. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen if you're going to blow something up. But uh, you put it in line. Put your power coming in online. Okay? Okay, through movie magic. <laughs> we got uh, these guys stripped out. Um, ground, neutral, hot. The green one or bare wires ground. We have to, uh, I'm missing one wire. Oh. I gotta hook up a, <laughs> a ground wire here. But you can see it done here your hot, which is a small prong, your larger prong is a neutral. They're usually color coded white, uh, gold on this side. Uh, sometimes they're not. If you're using aluminum wiring, usually all the screws are the same. I actually have a video of just an outlet. I think it's about 15 minutes long, if I remember correctly. Uh, you'd be surprised the uh, debate I got on, argue, on that uh, video. You might find that interesting another thing is when you are working on electricity and you are connecting or disconnecting the power you should be disconnecting the hot first then the neutral and then the ground when you reconnect you should be reconnecting the ground first the neutral and then the hot last okay something to note uh, not sure why that is I guess safety reasons I'm not an electrician again, but it's a nice note to, to know. I'm going to start pigtailing all of these together. I'll be taking my lime pliers and um, twisting them all together the right way, hopefully. <laughs> uh, let's put the other green wire in, pause the video, movie magic, and pigtail everything together while we start. Then we actually put everything in the box, put the cover on, and so on, okay? So give me a second, I'll pause the video. Okay, I got my wires twisted together. Uh, my grounds neutral and hot now I'm gonna uh, put them twist them together with the 10 gauge wiring and I should be able to put my wire nuts on I want you to see this shot this is kind of important can you see how the wires are twisted together I hope you can um, sometimes you snip off a little end you might not need the whole piece if this was stranded wire, it'd be easier. Stranded. If this was solid wire, it might be a little bit easier. The job might look a little bit cleaner. Um, but that's basically what it is. They're taking the red wire nut. They're not taking the blue one like I might have thought. This isn't something I normally do. Uh, but definitely you want to um, wind them up together as tight as possible like that. Okay, you might have to snip off the end a little bit like I just did. I'll put my wire nut on there. Um, people don't realize you, that wire should be as tight as you can get it, especially on something like this. You don't want this coming apart. You'll know when you're tightening it, you won't be able to turn. And some people will take the uh, Lyman's pies and go that extra turn if they feel they have to. I don't feel I have to on here. I'm going to take the last step I know. Learn this one up north. Uh, they don't do it down here in Virginia very much. Okay, you will see me grab the wire nut. And I will try to tape it tight and tape the wires tight together so they don't come loose. Okay, um, you can see all, I got to do the neutrals. I didn't do the neutrals, so I will be taping neutral in a second. But that's the last step I will take. 
Again, you don't see the step very much. I think I've seen this on high voltage machinery where they do something like that. Or they have different style connectors. They don't use even this style connector. They use something where you put the wire in it, it won't come out again. Unless you have like a skinny screwdriver to move that blade so the work, you can pull the wire out. The, um, does not meet. That's a little bit above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, but this would be the steps I would take. I would twist them together as tight as possible. I would put that wire nut on it as tight as possible. Uh, if I need, felt I needed a little more leverage, I'd take the channel lock and twist that wire nut again uh, to it was tight. And then I would actually put that final step, put tape on there, making sure these are not coming apart. Okay, that's very important to me anyway. Uh, there's the one, there's two, and I'll be putting the box together. I'll show you everything when it's together, everything's inside. Okay, you guys don't need to see me tape up the neutral. I already showed you the hot, pretty much how it's done. Ah, we're already here. <laughs> I'll you probably start with the wires together first. Head over to the cap and go right back down to the wires themselves. So I know I got a nice tight fit there. And that's basically it. Okay, that's basically it. There's all three right there. All done for you guys. Uh, now we're going to put everything in the box. Pause the video. Okay, I got one outlet in. Of course, I didn't hook up my neutral. Doi! But it kind of, I mean, my ground, it could have actually came out. It was pretty tight in there. Some things you gotta check, boy. I don't have power to this, otherwise, I, there it goes. I could have swiped put it in there tight enough. Maybe I didn't. Alright. Make sure that sucker's tight. Um, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble here because uh, you got some thick wires. <laughs> They're not like standard. Um. Standard wires. I got two in two different ways. Let's try to put it the same way. More uniform. So I have one in two different directions. That'd be kind of funny. You can get away with that. Um, I guess try to keep proper practices. Okay. Let's put this in there. Then we're gonna double check, make sure nothing is loose. The wiring because it can get loose. When you're putting down your screws, you can actually take your hand and push the outlet down in the wiring, so it makes putting them in place a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. Just wanted you guys to see that step because this wiring is kind of thick, a little hard to work with. <laughs> it ain't necessarily going to be the easiest thing to do. So we do that a lot of times with. Even with 14 gauge wiring, the box can be tight, things can be tight. So, you can actually just push down the outlet a little bit, a little bit just trying to rely on the screw, you don't bend the ends over here. Okay, these uh, ends right here, you're not trying to bend them. That's pretty much what it looks like before we put the cover on, we got everything inside. Some people say, well, you could just put regular outlets and rely on the uh, breakers on the generator. I agree. Uh, but why not be double safe? I mean, you're not going to, you know, you're not using interlink. Um, you're not using a sub panel. Uh, so this is going to give me a second peace of mind, a uh, second uh, fault. Uh, if something happens, I have a second way to actually know I should be okay. I mean, this is a lot of power, 30 amps. <laughs> you could stop somebody's heart uh, with amperage. It's not both, it's the amps. Um, it's not the current, it's the amount of power that you're pushing. So it could be 12 volts. And if you got the right amount of amps, you're gone. So it's just, don't, don't, take, don't take that for granted. Okay. Put the cover on and we'll see what it looks like in a second. Of course, I don't know where my stuff is at, but it's all right. They have some nicer ones that were a little different colors with black and red and white. And I just try not to get too fancy. I just wanted things to look good. So that's what I, this is what I went with. You guys can go what you like. Now, honestly, I'm gonna say there's some real pros out there that know what they're doing and they're gonna make suggestions that Vic, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right. Uh, you should do this better. But I'm positive this is satisfactory for the most, the majority of us to help us uh, feel safe. What we're we doing with the proper gauging on the wiring.
Put a little, a little bit of cooking. Okay, she's selling down now. Okay, um, so I don't just have the breakers um, outside on generator. If they fail, I'm toast. <laughs> Whatever I'm doing, my computer is toast. So these being indoor, I think it's a smart way to go. It's extra money. Some people don't have those means. Uh, I'm going to use every trick I know to try to make things safe. Because I don't know much about generators. I've done a lot in my life. Um, but I haven't worked with generators. Inverters, whatever it is, stuff like that. I've done three-phase switches, relays, uh, live. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. Um, okay. I hope that's satisfactory for you guys before I end the video. When I have power, I can take my little... Uh, GFCI outlet tester put in there make sure everything is reading good um, the only really concern for me is the ground there's a ground on the generator and these outlets the tabs are ground so being there in the box I gotta find a way to ground this box or I gotta ground the generator outside I, I really want that ground to be better that's my weak point here that I can see looking at it just relying on the generator on the ground and the generator. Not sure. If I was in a house and I could run a ground through the piping, uh, that would be fine for me. If I could run it to a service panel, uh, that would probably be better. So something to note on this setup, it's not the best, but it can get you out of a bind. Uh, it can get you to hook up your generator for not a lot of money. Um, I got a bunch of little caps here I got to put on the outside. And again, my other flaw here is this fitting right here is not really the proper fitting for it. I made it work. Kind of gave you a generalized description. i probably get one of those metal fittings. Even if I got to pay for 10 next time, I'll take this with me to the store and I'll get the right size fitting because I know what that is. I'll figure that out, okay? All new to me. Um, I think you guys got the idea. <laughs> so now you're picking up the 30 amp RV head. Here and you're going straight to a uh, box, outlet box, a uh, double gang box you're going to have in your house and now you got to run extension cords. Is this the prettiest way to go? We don't have a lot of uh, power losses here. Um, three times in the past year, the longest time was 37 hours. This is the generator that came in handy for 37 hours, trust me. All the times for hours at a time, uh, 3 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon, 2.30 in the afternoon, about 12 hours. Another time shorter than that, maybe 8 hours, 6 hours, I don't remember. But this has been the past year, and there's a lot going on with the weather. Um, you know, a little safety for me, my wife, uh, having lights on, um, other health concerns, whatever, being able to use my computer, um, all kinds of stuff, watch TV, keep the food, uh cold um 30 amps is enough to run the refrigerator lighting uh tv and computer um can i run the heating system yeah uh, if i have a freezer what am i gonna do am i gonna run the refrigerator in the daytime run the freezer at night that's an idea uh, things for you guys to consider again this video is not perfect <laughs> you guys got the idea and i'm pretty sure this might save somebody's rear end because it's going to save mine i'll see you guys in the next one bye